Back here on Sportsline, Steve Lehman with you tonight, along with Belmont basketball coach Rick Burton, Scott Ramsey, president and CEO of the Nashville Sports Council. Let's switch gears now from the tournament and talk about the Davis Cup. This is an event that I am super pumped about as a tennis <laughs> fan coming to Nashville. Coach, I want to ask you first because I think you might be one of the first people in Nashville who had any inkling this might come. Jay Wayne Richmond, who's a Belmont grad, right. is the director of major events for the USTA. And when they knew they might have the opportunity to host what is the second round, the quarterfinals of the Davis Cup, back, I guess, uh, last year, probably, early this year, no, early he this called year. you up. And well, what happened exactly? Well, yeah, he, he just, uh, in fact, he sent me an email first and said, uh, would the Curb Event Center be available one of a couple of different weekends? And one was Fed Cup and one was Davis Cup, and I frankly didn't know which one, but but went to our people in the Curb Event Center and found out that, that the weekend of the Davis Cup was a possibility, had to move one little event. And, um, and so um, I went to Dr. Robert Fisher, our president, and just said, here's what's in front of us, here's what could happen. Dr. Fisher uh, is is really excited about getting major events. Obviously, the presidential debates, the number one thing we've had there sure. at a national level. But he saw the he saw what this could mean to Belmont and to Nashville. He, he's a he's a tennis guy too. He's played it. He had a son that played it competitively, and uh, so so the ball got rolling, and and we put in a bid and had a couple of a couple of other mm -hmm. pretty significant cities got Scott involved and we had a big meeting one day and talked about all of it and uh, so I was just uh, I mean I was as excited as you are to, to think it might happen then we had to live through going to Serbia yeah. and winning that that first round winning the opening round match yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, and then after that is when we found out that we mm -hmm. got the bid so yeah. uh, well, and first things okay. first, you actually had to take a tape measure out and make sure the court could <laughs> even fit in. I mean, the Curb Center, for those people who don't know, that's your basketball gym right. and multi-purpose facility for a lot of other events, too. But it's most known for having a basketball court right. in there. Mm -hmm. You had to make sure you could even get a tennis court in. Yeah, and, and, and the great thing is that you can almost just barely get it in. So that means the seats are going to be really close Incredible. to the yeah. court. I mean, I, you, you can sit in any seat in there and see tennis really well and you you know you I've been to the US Open and you get up there in the, the nosebleeds and it's it's hard hard to see the ball on a different at times. zip code at times. exactly this is going to be unbelievable but yeah Steve Barrick our, our, our assistant AD and I went down and, and took it out and went from one side to one side and one end to the other end and uh, and it fits <laughs> and uh, so uh, they're gonna you know it'll be interesting to see the transformation of that facility the week prior to that to that it's gonna it's going to become a tennis building uh, in, in in short order it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a lot of fun that's for sure Scott Ramsey you've been involved with bringing just about every event to Nashville for a long time whether that be the women's final four or uh, frankly American Mortgage Music City Bowl obviously NHL all-star game you've done a lot of events but in terms of sort of the international scale I mean, there's something like 26 countries yeah. that will be watching this match. You got people from all over the world. The opponent is Belgium. You know, <laughs> uh, what was this event like when people came to get the National Sports Council involved? Well, you know, it's kind of funny. Every event kind of comes in a different way or method. Um, some are very long bid processes, and this one was very <laughs> short to, to what Rick said, um, and it's a very short planning period. I mean, very seldom do you have six to eight weeks to really plan an international event like this. So, really, all the all the compliments go to to Belmont and their facility folks, really able being able to to turnkey it this quickly. Um, you know, and, and I, I think to pick up on a couple things Rick said, I think one, it, it's just an event you don't get to see every day, and I, I think I think the the mix of events that we've been able to have in Nashville. Um, are, are really something pretty special. Um, also think it, it allows us to showcase all of our facilities here. I mean, sometimes we get kind of pigeonholed in an arena in the stadium. Yeah, we got a marathon that runs the streets, but the, the chance to showcase Curb Event Center on international television, and again, what we talked about earlier, to expose not just the city, but the university and the facility regionally and nationally and internationally is a great opportunity for us. So I think you got to weigh all those, all those values. What is the challenge of putting on an event of this magnitude on 
a seven or an eight week lead time like you guys are doing? <clears throat> Well, uh, in, there's there's typically, and this isn't unusual, but there's typically a lot of uh, decision makers around the table. And certainly the USTA has to have a very turnkey project when they're in charge of hosting uh, this event. So Jeff Ryan, Jay Wayne, they came in with a package. And certainly you're leaning upon the facility folks at, at Belmont to, to really deliver that piece. I think what, what we're really challenged with right now is just getting the word out. Uh, the marketing because I, I think and the other thing is it's going to be easy to know who to root for. I mean, <laughs> right. red, white, and blue. I Absolutely. Mean, I mean, you know, whether it's a Ryder Cup, whether it's a World Cup, whether it's whatever, and in this case, the Davis Cup, a chance to come out and red, white, and blue or cheering for the United States is a pretty, pretty great thing. So I think right now it's just a, it's a compact period to try to get the marketing out. And we've been talking about March Madness here for a few minutes, and, and that's kind of dominating the, the media set and, and really everybody's mindset. So we've got to turn that a little bit here in the next couple of weeks and, and fill it up. And to Rick's point, I think it will be an electric atmosphere in there. Coach, that's one of the things I'm most excited about is I love the tennis and just watching that high level of tennis. These are the best guys in the world is great. But for anyone who's ever watched team tennis, even at the college level, when you go to those matches and you've got a team aspect to it, it makes it kind of like a basketball game in terms of the way people cheer. And the Davis Cup, there's going to be people waving flags and cheering between every point, And it's going to be rowdy in there. Noisemakers, uh, all kinds of stuff. It's very different for people out there that just occasionally flip around and watch a tennis match these days you know it's 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 very often uh, half the, half the stadiums for one player has for another player if you get Federer out there they're probably going to be for Federer more often than not but yeah. but you don't see that even at the US Open you don't even see that for US players in such a big way but this this and and I don't know if people understand the intensity of playing for your own country uh, and what you see that the Ryder Cup's only every two years, mm -hmm. uh, but you see that big time when you watch the Ryder Cup. And and now, since I've started watching more tennis in the last three or four years, I've, I've watched Federer win it uh, for for Switzerland. I watched Andy Murray win it for Great Britain, and and that obviously meant as much to them as winning their majors meant to them. So I think we're going to see competition at its most intense level. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal for sure. The team announcements, at least on the U.S. side, come Wednesday afternoon. But chances are we're looking at guys like John Isner, Jack Sock, Sam Query headlining the American side. Those are some pretty big names out there. But I think to your point, even if you're not the biggest tennis fan or if you don't necessarily love those individuals, this is a chance to root for America. Sure. We just got done with the Olympics. Everybody always gets <laughs> gets the, the patriotism up at, a, at an all-time high during that time of year or every four years. This is an opportunity that weekend to wear your red, white, and blue and chant Go USA the whole time. It is. And it's, it's also going to be a week long of events. There's a lot of stuff in this, and the, the USDA's program, I think, mm -hmm. is net generation. Right. And there's going to be different programs going on all week. And there'll be a draw party at the Country Music Hall of Fame. And it's going to showcase Nashville in so many ways. And let me add something. Scott sort of, sort of gave Belmont some credit, but I'm telling you, his group just finding the rooms that it was needed <laughs> in this was probably step number one or we yeah, just couldn't have happened because it's not easy to find rooms in Nashville these days no. and to find the number in that short of time was pretty remarkable and so uh, it's gonna it, you know the, the USDA is gonna make this way more than just the three days of competition there's gonna be stuff going on all right. week a lot of youth events um, yeah three days of youth events, so it was a, a great kind of grassroots kind of opportunity in Nashville to kind of grow tennis as well. So hopefully a little legacy piece coming out of the event. Yeah, and just so people understand at home, the way this works is the matches are three days. It'll be Friday, April 6th, Saturday, April 7th, Sunday, April 8th. It's five matches, two singles matches on Friday, a doubles match on Saturday, two more 
singles matches on Sunday. You need to win three to advance, so it's a best of, of five situation there. That goes on throughout the course of the weekend. There's tickets on sale for all three of those days. Mm -hmm. But the teams will get into town, or at least the U.S. team I know, will get into town probably Monday night and start practicing on Tuesday. So there will be tennis around town. There will be events around town leading up to it. So a lot of stuff to get to. We'll get to a little bit more of that on the other side. We're talking about the Davis Cup coming to Nashville. First time in four decades. And it will be held at Belmont's Curb Events Center coming up April 6th through the 8th. The United States against Belgium in the Davis Cup quarterfinals. Much more on the other side right after these commercials here on Sportsline on News Channel 5+. Plus.